Hello, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois. And this video is going to take a look at C++ operator overloading and specifically, conventionally speaking, what does RHS and LHS mean when we're talking about setting up the operator functions. So I've already gone ahead and set up an example, so here we go. So I have, let's just go, kind of go through the details here, I have a class called example so we can overload the operators in this class and I have a simple constructor that just and this is basically this example class is going to be just a wrapper for an integer value so like just basically just think of int just with more junk associated with it here so we've done an example like this in class before but if you're not in my class then you haven't seen anything like this so a sample or a simple constructor that goes ahead and sets the value to whatever the input is and so, you know, to, you know, that's what we do as constructors. We may, you know, we take the private data and we initialize all the private data. Okay, so that's simple constructor. And then now you'll see two operators here of two different types. So here is a member function operator. So you see example is the return type, plus is the operator, and you notice const example reference when it comes to my examples here and I go RHS and it's since it's a parameter to the function it could have a name anything it doesn't have to be RHS but that is conventionally what we call it and we'll discuss this you'll see in the example as we step through the code you'll see exactly why we call it RHS and again you could call it whatever you want but the same thing goes for the next example here the next uh, the friend function when it comes to the uh, print operator the arrow arrow operator is that it you know like everything else it returns an O stream reference it is the reference and it has an LHS and an RHS this one only had one parameter but this one has two and so remember a friend function is a weird thing in C++ because this function is not a member variable even our member function even though the function is listed inside of the example class this friend keyword kind of kicks it into like limbo land here. It's not a global function, but it's also not necessarily a member function either. And so I have a friend function that can do the work here, and I have both an LHS and an RHS. And again, we'll talk about this here in a couple seconds. So, and then, so then for the operators themselves, yes, I'm just adding the values together. So down here I can say, okay, I'm going to return a new example object that just takes the values stored under the hood, adds them together, and puts it into this new object. And so, and so, and then again, we'll talk about this in a second. And then this one just prints out whatever the value is for whatever object I'm discussing here. So now that's just a quick example here. So we can run through this code and we can just talk through everything that's going on because there's not a lot going on here. So. Well, there's a lot, but not a lot, functionally speaking. So let me run my program. And, oops, I hate when this happens. I had this all nicely set up, and then it kicks it away. Okay, so I'm at my breakpoint here. And so my vi my visual, my uh, window is over here. We don't need the window till the very end, so I'm just going to leave it over to the right-hand side here. And I go, I'm at my breakpoint. Let me just need that out of the way so I can see and make sure you guys see what's going on. Yep, I'm at my breakpoint. You can see there. I just set a breakpoint so I can hit that. And so I hit F11 and I go in. I go in. There we go. So then this is the constructor. I'm going to set up an object called A. It's going to have a value of 3. So you see the 3 is the parameter that comes in. I hit F10 a few times to go through. And, I, and you know, so I'm hitting the constructor. And now I come out. A is initialized value 3. And now the next line of code, B, is just garbage because B has not been initialized yet. It hasn't been constructed. So I go in one more time, hit my constructor. So now B is going to have a value 9. And now A has my 3, B has my 9, and now I'm ready to try out the two operators. So here, example C equals A plus B. So the first thing that occurs here is the A plus B. We're not going to worry about this. This would be, this would be using the copy constructor, which we have not talked about whole nother lecture altogether, but this is, you know, obviously just operator overloading. So this operation goes first, A plus B. And so what does that mean? Let me hit F11. Where does that code, where does it take us? It takes us over to the plus operator, just like we would expect. A is going to be a 3, B is going to be a 9, so I would expect this C to have a 12, right? I mean, I just, if I'm going to be taking this value plus RHS value. So now here is the question, like, what does RHS mean? And so for this kind of operator, the you know, something that only takes one parameter, you know, if I see this plus sign, I go, well, 
maybe you see it, maybe you don't. LHS, RHS, left-hand side, right-hand side. And so it all comes down to what is on the left-hand side of this operator and what is on the right-hand side. So when you have something like this, which is just a one-parameter operator, the left-hand side is presumed to be me, and in C++, me, the object I'm in currently, is called this. And that's why you don't have to do it. No, most times people don't. So, if you, But you know, in Java, they do that a lot, this dot, this dot, this dot. But in C++, we generally don't. So if I just leave value, this is just whatever's on the left-hand side. So if I look at value, can I mouse over it anymore? Let me put it back. You know, this dot value. Maybe I ruined it by, let me see if I ruined it. Let me run it one more time. F10, F10, F11, this, there. Oh, oh I guess not. Maybe I just F10. Maybe I have to go in. There we go. I just had to go into the function. Sorry about that. Debugger is fun sometimes. So this is the, the, the object that has value 3. So when you do things this way, the left-hand side is presumed, and it's me. So that's where the 3 comes from. It's the A object over here that gets put in, and that's this. And so the RHS is the right-hand side. That's the B, and that's why RHS's value is 9. So just like we were expecting, if this is a 3 and this is a 9, we better get 12 out of the deal, right? So there's my 3, there's my 9, I'll add it together, put it into a new example object, and return the, the, the new object that stores the value 12. And I can see that if I return back and I go, there's my C with value 12. So again, that's just how a one-parameter operator works, and now versus this here, the two-parameter operator. And so as we've already discussed here, the, the main difference here is this time you explicitly have to describe what's on the left-hand side of the operator, what's on the right-hand side of the operator. So because of the way this function works out, left-hand side of this operator is a, a stream, an O stream. And that's why the left-hand side is C out. And it could be a file, it could be other things. But in this case, it's 99% of the time going to be a C out, but we can't presume that. That's why we use O stream, because then we can use it for anything. We never have to rewrite our code. So left-hand side of the operator is C out. Right-hand side is an example. C is an example object. And so I can pass a const reference to this thing. And so I've maintained my contract here. I have, I have a, a stream on the left and an example on the right. And so this function will be called. I can F11 into this. So don't worry about the O stream, you know, all the, the details under the hood. It gets really complicated. But again, the RHS should be the, the value that has the 12, which is C. So then just to, you know, I go in and I print the 12. And now this is where I can actually go and see the 12 printed out here. And again, it's just, let me just get rid of it again. And then it returns the stream like it always would and return back. And then, you know, basically it's fulfilled its contract as part of that operator. What do I want to do when I hit that print operator? And in our case, we're just printing the value that is stored under the hood for that object. And that's pretty much it when it comes to, you know, LHS and right-hand side and RHS and that sort of thing when it comes to, to just uh, operator overloading. And again, this is not the operator overloading talk. That, you know, this is just a supplement to that understanding of what does LHS mean? Because I get this question quite a lot. So uh, thanks for uh, sitting through this. If you have any questions, as always, send me a comment in the comment section or send me an email through normal means. And uh, we'll see you guys around. Thank you. Have a great day.